Hello everyone, and welcome to Curl Space Program, episode 11 of SSTO Space Program. Today we have Minmus in our sights. Our last massive freighter launches left us pretty broke again, and we have a bunch of high-paid contracts on Minmus, one of which requires making a new surface outpost on Minmus. Before we start, I would like to say that there is also a music video covering the first part of our mission, but if you would like to know a little bit more about how this outpost was designed and what its purpose will be, you are more than welcome to stay. With the entire infrastructure we've just put in orbit, building a new surfaced base doesn't look particularly challenging. Our last generation SSTO launch vehicle can easily put over 400 tons of cargo into low carbon orbit, and two freighters that we have can easily carry over 1000 ton of payload well beyond Minmus. Usually MKS bases are um, way more expensive than 240,000 credits we will be paid for by the contract, and this one you see right here is no exception. This base was more than twice as expensive, but unlike our previous Munar outpost, it was relatively well thought through. This time I spent quite some time picking a right landing spot beforehand, using data provided by our scansat mapping satellites obviously, and base components themselves are also quite adapted to our landing location, but more on that later however. We are sending our outpost to Minmus using our new SSTO launch vehicle, the same that we've used to put Flame Leviathan in orbit. The base weighs almost 200 tons and can be sent to orbit in just one launch, as it is less than half the maximum payload this SSTO can carry. We could have brought the Transfer Rocket 2 in the same launch, but I thought it would be just cooler if we used Karan instead, which was obviously fueled in the meantime. Currently we have no task for uh, none of our massive freighters and Jeb who is manning the Karen is getting bored. So the base components were packed to fit under the fairing with the exception of the central dome that was simply too large and we are going to assemble them in orbit once we get to Minmus. I equipped each module with minimal RCS and monopropellant to make the assembly possible but also to allow docking our entire base to the freighter itself. On top of that, uh, the base is equipped with six terrier engines and enough fuel to land on Minmus surface. We reached suborbital trajectory without any problems, as our SSTO is rated for much heavier payloads, and this time I planned the launch time to ensure we would get an encounter with the Caron relatively easily. So the circularization burn was executed once we were very close to the freighter. Initially I wanted to dock each base section to a dedicated docking port on the freighter, and this is why there are docking ports installed on top of each construction port you can see. After pondering about this idea for a while, however, I came to a conclusion that it's going to be a waste of time and monopropellant as Karen weighs over 2200 tons when fully fueled and can carry another 2000 tons as payload to Minmus, so attaching a much, much lighter payload, even off center, is not going to be an issue. So the base was docked to one of the large docking ports I have installed on the toroidal reaction wheel and we were ready to send our freighter on its maiden flight to Minmus. Getting to Minmus is pretty straightforward and requires much less delta V than getting to the moon and Caron has 3600 meters per second when it's fully loaded so with 200 ton of payload we have uh, more than we need. In fact, we could land Karan on Minmus no problem, just unpacking the base on the surface would be slightly more difficult. So I think that instead of covering the transinjection burn, that I'm sure all of you know how to perform better than me, I'll talk a little bit about our base and uh, the location I have chosen for it. This time I spent quite some time trying to figure out MKS resource conversion charts and I wanted this base to be primarily an agricultural testing facility suited for permanent colonization. In the most recent iteration of MKS life support there are multiple farming options, agroponics which is the most efficient and requires only fertilizer and mulch, dirt base that is least efficient and requires dirt and much less fertilizer, and substrate based which is a bit like dirt only uses substrates instead of dirt and is more efficient than dirt but less efficient than agroponics. Each of those requires some amount of fertilizer, and fertilizer can be produced by various means, the most efficient one being by mining and processing gypsum, but it can also be produced by mining and processing minerals. Dirt and substrate farming also requires water, and water can be obtained from hydrates, or from stock ore. Now, all of this sounds quite complicated already, and on top of that there are some resources that are mutually exclusive, so it's not possible to find a location that would have every resource in one place. 
I spent quite some time looking at Minmus research maps and I noticed that Great Flats had not only high concentration of dirt, minerals and ore, potentially allowing us to set, a, um, to set up a self-sufficient farming outpost in either agroponics or dirt farming, or both potentially, but it also had relatively high concentration of rare metals. And um, at the moment when I was launching this base, I wasn't sure if the mining and conversion rates are going to be high enough to sustain eight kerbals this outpost was designed for. But at least it would be possible to test the production chain and maybe get some extra resources in the process. Minerals can also be broken down into chemicals and rare metals are actually quite expensive. Our farming modules were predefined to work in both agroponics and dirt farming modes, so if one of the production chains would not be effective enough, this still would be the other one to maintain production of supplies. Changing the setup after launch is of, of course possible, but requires some specialized parts and material kits. Those are high-end goods that uh, can be manufactured in place if you have full production chains, but initially have to be shipped in from Kerbin. Apart from that, we had storage for minerals, silicates, because those have proven to be quite abundant as well in the spot where we landed, and ore. Using various processing plants and agricultural support module, we can extract water from ore, create fertilizer from minerals, and also extract chemicals from it. We can also mine rare metals, and quite efficiently too, as it turned out. All of that is going to be powered by a Duna series nuclear power plant with enough enriched uranium to keep us covered for a couple of decades. Now, crew-wise, there are going to be eight kerbals in our base, a miner for operating drills, a technician for operating processing plants, a geologist for operating sifters and crushers, two biologists for farming, one quartermaster for logistics, one mechanic and one scientist. The way it works now Kerbal-wise is that stock Kerbals are very capable and provide boosts and have capabilities to operate different types of equipment at once, while Kerbals that are introduced by MKS have usually only one or two traits, but are much cheaper to hire, like 10 times cheaper. For example, a scientist a stock scientist can work in a greenhouse, a med bay, and perform research in the lab, while a biologist can only do two things. A full description of those traits is available in the MKS documentation, and I will link it in the description. Apart from that, we needed to ship in some material kits, those are needed to deploy inflatable modules after launch, some machinery, which is used to run various MKS components, and some specialized parts, which will be used if we decide to reconfigure any module we have in the future. As you just saw, our station was assembled in orbit, all construction ports were compressed and formed a permanent connection between each module. At this point, landing the station was quite easy. We had around 240 meters per second um, of delta V, which is far more than uh, what is needed to land from low minimus orbit. Each tank was also equipped with a reaction wheel and we still had some monopropellant left, so we had a decent level of control over the outpost and we landed in a roughly the spot we wanted. I say roughly because I haven't unlocked the narrow band scanner, so the resource data we had available was preliminary. It was good enough, however. Finding right configuration for the engines was actually quite hard, as the sense of mass for this base is in a really weird spot. Currently it looks quite ugly, but my idea was that uh, once landed we can use Kerbal Touchment System to detach the tanks and engines and build a rocket fuel storage tank for our base and recover the engines in a future mission. I tried to figure out a setup with detachable sky cranes, but it turned out to be even more complicated. Once landed, all greenhouses were deployed and all modules and drills started. I checked if nothing was overheating. We have a lot of radiators as you can see, and I estimated the necessary cooling power based on the tooltip data, but one can never be too sure. I then proceeded with starting the habitats and life support modules, and once it was done, it turned out that uh, our crew of 8 Kerbals could stay in this base for about 9 years before becoming homesick. Not as long as in our Munar outpost, but still quite long. We didn't get paid for building the outpost yet, as our crew didn't include a pilot and that was a contract requirement. And we also don't have a rover, that would be handy. So the only thing left to do was to send another mission to Minmus with a rover and a pilot and monitor if our base is functioning as expected. Since we also had a satellite contract for Minmus and a surface recovery mission, I packed all of that, plus a rover obviously, to a cargo bay of our Andromeda dropship and sent it to Minmus. Andromeda, as you know, was designed as a Muna dropship and um, as such has a cargo capacity of 10 tons, but for Minmus it can carry a bit more. 
It's a vessel I enjoy flying and I quite like how it looks, but most importantly, it's very easy to control. It's also easy to land in a specific location, either on Moon or Minmus, making it ideal for cargo deliveries. With this launch we are going to finish four contracts. The one that I am most excited for was a surface recovery of an uh, unknown module and this is probably because I've never done or seen such a contract before. The module we need to recover has an estimated mass of 1.5 tons and is too large to fit into Mark III cargo bay, we know that much. So to recover it I designed a sky crane with a claw attached to it that you will see later. Second contract we are going to finish requires us to add a pilot to our outpost. This will be Valentina, who is currently piloting this vessel. And the third one requires us to rendezvous two vessels in Menmus orbit and dock two vessels either in orbit or on the surface. Since those two vessels don't need to be the same, we will dock a rover we have in the cargo bay to our surface outpost, but for the rendezvous we will use Andromeda and Charon. This way we will bring Jeb back to Kerbin. Charon can be operated autonomously and we need Jeb back at the KC. The fourth contract requires us to position a small satellite in a retrograde equatorial orbit of Minmus. To minimize the cost of this satellite I removed all propulsion and control systems from it and equipped it with a relatively powerful relay antenna. We will use it as a communication satellite but also we will need to deploy it in a correct orbit as it has no means of adjusting it later. Right now we are leaving Kerbin and as Andromeda was placed in a transfer orbit to Minmus I noticed that our Minmus base was already running out of storage space for rare metals. This is particularly exciting news because the amount we can store in uh, is relatively small but nevertheless worth over 1 million funds. Since it was mined in just a couple of days, in fact less than it's needed for a one-way trip to Minmus, it means that we have just discovered an easy way to get a lot of money. And the best part is, we already have everything we need to bring it back to Kerbin. We just need to launch a couple of bags and um, much bigger storage containers for rare metals. Our contract satellite was deployed and as you saw it's literally just a CubeSat with an antenna and some solar panels. With uh, the satellite deployed in high minimus orbit we will have at least periodic connection between our base and KC once the outpost is on the other side of the minimus. Next step was to lower our orbit to about 10 km and deploy our surface recovery module. The sky crane that I designed for this contract has an estimated delta V of about 900 meters per second, so way more than we need, and is equipped with a lot of monopropellant and a powerful reaction wheel to ensure that we will be able to grab whatever it is that we need to recover. Once we landed close to our destination, it turned out that the module in question was an open cargo bay, so it would not fit into one. Once physics loaded, it started rolling and jumping all over the place, and uh, eventually uh, it landed on its side. I flew the sky crane over and pushed it on its side to rotate it. Then I positioned the sky crane directly above the cargo bay and managed to drop it almost dead center, grabbing it firmly with a claw. After it was attached to our sky crane, getting it back to orbit was a simple matter. It was a little bit off center, but not far enough to render the vessel unstable. After executing the transfer burn to cabin, I realized that I forgot to add parachutes to this vessel, so I guess we will have to recover it from orbit eventually. But we will do that later. Right now it's time to land Andromeda next to our outpost and deliver the rover we have in the cargo bay, and finish the surface outpost contract by transferring Valentina to it. As you probably know already, Andromeda is equipped with aerospikes that are used as VTOL engines and is actually quite fun to land in the VTOL mode. It has a lot of excess fuel and oxidizer for a Moonard trip, so on Minmus we can be even more careless. With that in mind, I didn't pay much attention to how my approach was executed and instead tried to land as close to our base as I could without actually running into it. After some overly safe landing, totally not Kerbal style, we ended up around 100 meters away from our base and once on the ground I proceeded with unpacking the rover. The Malamut rover we have brought with us is equipped with docking ports, but our outpost has none, so I decided to detach one of the docking ports from Andromeda's cargo bay and uh, using Kerbal attachment system install it on our outpost. Once this was done I docked the rover that was driven by Valentina to our base and with that feat, we completed our contract and advanced another. 
Next task we had required even more engineering work, so our outpost engineer, Bill Wright Kerman, procured his screwdriver and started detaching terrier engines and fuel tanks that were used to land the outpost on the surface. My idea was to build a relatively pretty looking rocket fuel storage tank using the tanks that we had already, by redesigning the layout a little bit. Detaching all the tanks and pushing them around required some hard work from Bill Wright, and he definitely needed a break once it was done. After some time spent playing with Kerbal Attachment System, our new fuel tank was completed. Next step was to collect all Terrier engines that were lying around the base, and to simplify the transportation, I temporarily attached them to our rover. Once all engines were collected, I drove the rover over to Andromeda and fixed the engines in the cargo bay. This way, we can recover them on Kerbin for the full price. They are not worth much, but every little bit counts. Once the engines were loaded, Valentina took Andromeda back in orbit to encounter Charon, and by doing so, finish the last contract we had and bring Jab back home. We will leave Charon here for now, as we will need it to bring all those rare metals back to Kerbin, once we mine enough of them to at least have a significant payload to carry. This will be covered in the future, but right now it turned out that we are at the launch window to Jewel. I think it's uh, such a rare and interesting opportunity that we won't even bother with bringing our Minmus team to Kerbin now, after all it takes almost a week to get to or from Minmus, as uh, we need to figure out what kind of mission we want to launch to Jewel. I would like you to help me decide on that, so please leave your suggestions below. As Andromeda is leaving Minmus sphere of influence, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed, and if you did, please consider giving this video a like. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm Mark Frim, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!